beg to move that this House do now adjourn. The question is that this House do now adjourn. Dame Maria Miller. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. For heart attack patients suffering from cardiogenic shock, every 10 minutes delay in treatment equates to a 3.3 per cent increase in the risk of death. Not only does this startling fact emphasise that every minute matters when it comes to emergency patients receiving treatment, but it also highlights the importance of locating our new hospitals strategically. After all, a hospital's reason to be is to save lives, and we must use the most up-to-date clinical evidence to ensure they do just that whenever possible. Last year, the then Secretary of State confirmed the biggest infrastructure investment in my constituents' history, seven to nine hundred million pounds for a new North Hampshire hospital with the Hampshire Hospitals Trust. We've just completed an extensive public consultation on how the new hospital will evolve the provision of services at two of the hospitals in the HHFT um, Foundation Trust, the Basingstoke and North Hampshire Hospital and the Royal Hampshire County Hospital in Winchester. The results of this consultation are due to be released in the coming weeks, and whilst I'm very much look, looking forward to seeing the views of residents on these important plans, I also believe it is essential that hospital services are configured so that they can best deliver treatment to patients, and this must be done by listening to how clinical experts feel we ought to locate both the services on a hospital level, but also on a departmental level. Although funding was confirmed last year, work to identify potential sites for the new acute hospital began in 2019. A comprehensive search for the right location spanned across North Hampshire, including Alton, Andover, Basingstoke and Eastleigh, Winchester and their surrounding areas, as well as practical considerations such as price, availability and size, absolutely fundamental to HHFT's criteria, were a series of clinical considerations regarding how to improve patient outcomes and increase accessibility. In the end, two viable sites were identified, one which is the trust preferred option between Basingstoke and Winchester near Junction 7 of the M3, the other is on the existing Basingstoke Hospital site. During assessments, the current Winchester Hospital site was also considered as an option. However, it was deemed to be too small to accommodate all of the services needed at our new acute specialist hospital. And besides, there's no adjacent land which could facilitate future expansion. A key reason why Junction 7 is the preferred site is that the ambulance service have argued in the past it would enable the sickest patients to access care more quickly. Locating a hospital in the centre of a town or a city may be convenient for patients attending elective surgery, but it is increasingly awkward for ambulances in a race against time. And as the statistic about heart attacks demonstrate when I open my remarks today, ambulances are so often in a race against time. And Junction 7 is a convenient location between Winchester and Basingstoke with easy access to the M3. Combined with the important access considerations, building a new hospital at Junction 7 would also not disrupt existing services while construction is taking place. These proposals are rooted in science and clinical experience, and they'll save lives. And it's clear to me that residents from across North Hampshire should follow the expert opinion on how um, their, and throw their weight behind supporting the Junction 7 approach. Not only is clinical guidance essential to the siting of the new hostel site, um, so is the location of specific services. The new HHFT hospital consultation introduced what the trust, uh, the trust new model of care, which centralises crucial services, an approach underpinned by mountains of clinical evidence, evidence and research. Medical evidence suggests that centralising services in this way reduces duplication, increases the quality of care, and is best of all for patients. In some departments, this model has already been rolled out, for instance, cardiology. If you have a heart attack in North Ham or Midge Hampshire, you will be sent to an amazing new heart centre in Basingstoke, where you'll be assured of top quality care all hours of the day. And the results have shown that this approach really saves lives. And we don't have to just take my word for that. 
seven of Hampshire's top clinicians, including the chief medical officer, published an open letter in support of this approach, and they wrote that bringing to, and I quote, bringing together more specialist services for the most seriously ill patients into one site would me mean we are able to bring services in line with best practice and national guidelines. This means if you're critically unwell, you'll be seen by experienced senior doctors and nurses who are experts in their field. And this would have significant benefits for patients, both in terms of improvements to their care and their clinical outcomes. And that is a quote from those experts. To bring the benefits of the new model into even greater focus, I want to touch on two particular areas of service, maternity and emergency care. Neonatal care units are graded on a three-tier scale, ranging from level one, which can treat unwell babies, to level three, which can care for the most premature or unwell. Previously, Hampshire hospitals had a level two rating, which was temp temporarily changed to level one plus in November 2023, following an unannounced CQC visit, which was conducted following a series of complaints. Although the overall rating of the trust remained good, it was, it was determined that the neonatal units did not see enough seriously unwell babies for the staff to maintain the specialist skills needed for level two status. This re relegation now means around 100 very sick or premature babies have to travel to Southampton or Frimley Park hospitals each year for treatment. Clearly, this is not easy for families, but we've been gifted a golden opportunity to make sure this decision is reversed so that more babies can be looked at closer to their families. Good practice and standards suggest that there should be 98 hours a week of on-site consult consultant cover, with 60 hours being the minimum requirement. At the moment, both the maternity sites in Winchester and Basingstoke are only able to provide the minimum requirement. Were services not duplicated across two sites, the hospital could provide one unit with more hours of consultant cover that reaches the recommended number of cases necessary to regain level two status. The current level one plus status of our maternity service shows that the status quo is not an option. North Hampshire and Mid Hampshire needs a better service and the surest way to secure it is by following the medical advice and centralising the services of the maternity unit into one hub at the new Junction 7 site. Another area where the new model of care will have an enormous impact is emergency care, which is set out to be reconfigured to reduce waiting times and streamline patients' treatment. A large emergency department, complete with trauma unit and children's emergency department, will be centralised at the new Junction 7 site. It will specialise in treating the most serious cases. However, both Basingstoke and Winchester will have an urgent treatment centre, and each will be led and supported by um, advanced nurse practitioners and doctors and other health professionals. Both will be open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and have been des designed to provide quick treatment. It's been estimated that two-thirds of cases currently being treated in A&E could be seen at a UTC, including all but the most serious illnesses and injuries. Restructuring facilities in this way will free up staff in A&E to focus on the most unwell patients while simultaneously reducing the waiting times for patients with less ail serious ailments. Plans have been rigorously drawn up in a way which ensures patients are rapidly assessed and diagnosed and treated. Both of these cases of maternity and emergency services underline the importance of listening to and following clinical guidance when determining the location, but also the configuration of our new hospital services. The government's made it very clear that it wishes to see both uh, the North Hampshire Hospital and the Winchester Hospital continue to provide services, um, and that has been reiterated by the hospital trust themselves. The plans are about a significant reconfiguration of where and how those services are provided. Um, and those recommendations are based on expert clinical advice because clinicians are best placed to identify the best way to treat patients and will do well to listen carefully to their advice and to, as far as possible, follow the plans informed by their method uh, their methodological research. 
The Hampshire and Isle of Wight Integrated Care Board are due to publish the findings of the consultation that's been carried out imminently. And whilst we're all looking forward to seeing those results, um, Hampshire Hospitals Trust must ensure, on behalf of residents, on behalf of their patients, that the clinical evidence, best practice, and the expert experience of clinicians remains at the forefront of their minds throughout. The £900 million investment in our health service in North and Mid Hampshire is indeed a once in a lifetime opportunity to improve what is on offer to residents throughout those communities. But we only have one opportunity to get it right. I hope that the Minister, in her replies today, can confirm to me her intention to support HHFT to make sure that they follow clinical advice whilst also making sure that they've listened to residents. Thank you very much. Minister. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker, and can I congratulate my right honourable friend, the member for Basingstoke, for securing a debate on this really important issue. I'm responding on behalf of my right honourable friend, the member for Pendle, who tells me that she has been a tireless campaigner for Basingstoke on this matter, as well as on countless others. So, Mr Deputy Speaker, the Government believes that the people of Hampshire should, of course, have a say over where their new hospital should be built. And as my right honourable friend said in her remarks, we've asked people from across the county to share their views with Hampshire Hospital's NHS Trust. I'm sure she understands, however, it would be wrong of us to preempt their views or indeed to interfere with their decision making. But I am happy to assure her that we remain absolutely committed to delivering the new hospital. The Trust and Integrated Care Board are going through the responses as we speak, and they will submit a business case for NHSE regional approval through the Integrated Care Board in a few months' time. And I should be clear that while the Trust and the ICB do this, there will be no final decision on the new hospital's location or the services that it will deliver. But once a decision has been taken, we will, of course, update the House. And I'm sure my right honourable friend will have much to say about that herself too. Now, I would like to address the points she raised on the importance of clinical guidance informing decision-making. She's absolutely right to say decisions should be locally led and based on the best clinical evidence, which is why proposals must meet our tests for good decision-making, which include a clear evidence base that's in keeping with clinical guidance and best practice. In developing the consultation, the Trust have looked at a variety of options to deliver clinical care in Basingstoke and Winchester. Experts have been consulted at every stage of the process to provide appropriate clinical guidance. Two particular examples in the consultation demonstrate how the Trust used clinical guidance to inform the options that they have put forward. The first relates to proposals around accident and emergency services. The Trust received expert clinical guidance from local doctors who strongly agree that maintaining emergency departments at both Basingstoke and Winchester would be unsafe and unsustainable. The Trust also received advice from the South East Coast Clinical Senate, an independent panel of senior doctors who expressed concern over retaining an A&E department at both sites due to serious concerns around patient safety. Instead, they have argued that acute medical services must be twinned with surgical services in order for patients to receive first-class care. Therefore, the proposal includes two brand-new 24-7 doctor-led urgent treatment centres and same-day emergency care to deal with most urgent care needs, one at the new specialist acute hospital and one at Winchester's Royal Hampshire County Hospital. Also, the proposals give the people of Hampshire an emergency department with a trauma unit and a children's emergency department at the specialist acute hospital that will treat the most serious conditions. As my right honourable friend said in her remarks, it's essential for new mothers and mums-to-be to have the best possible care for themselves and for their babies. 
she will know this is an area of healthcare that is very dear to my heart. So the Trust have looked carefully at keeping obstetrician-led maternity services at the Royal Hampshire County Hospital, but have found that many patient safety issues have left them not viable, particularly following the 2022 publication of the independent Ockenden Review of Maternity Services at the Shrewsbury and Telford Hospital NHS Trust which set out the need for obstetrician-led maternity services to be in hospitals that can also provide emergency surgery and critical care. And in Hampshire, these could only be provided at the new specialist acute hospital, because the neonatal units at the Winchester site currently do not treat enough babies to meet the requirements for level two care and consolidated services at the new specialist acute hospital will meet this requirement. The rationale is that these proposals will lead to fewer babies being transferred out of the area to receive vital neonatal care. And I think the whole house will agree the last thing new mothers need is an extra journey after giving birth to receive critical care. So, Mr Deputy Speaker, I thank my right honourable friend for raising this important issue and for con continuing to engage with the new hospital scheme. She is a real champion for her constituents in this place and they will have seen her fighting their corner today. We want to do everything in our power to get to the people of Hampshire the world-class care they deserve. And we will continue to support the Trust throughout the development of the business case to ensure plans meet the needs of staff and patients, as well as offering value for money for taxpayers. Now, I understand that my right hon. Friend, the Member for Pendle, has recently committed to visiting Basingstoke, and I'm sure my right hon. Friend will take immense pride in showing him around one of England's extremely beautiful towns. Thank you. Um, can I just uh, thank my honourable friend for confirming that the, that her and my honourable friend will be taking uh, his time to come and visit the new hospital. Will he be visiting the new the new? And perhaps I could encourage her to encourage him to visit the new hospital site that the hospital's minister is uh, has already announced. He's in the middle of procuring. I shall certainly pass that message on to my honourable friend and once again congratulations to my right honourable friend for raising this debate on this very important topic today. The question is that this House do now adjourn as many of that have been say aye. As you know, I think the eyes have it. The eyes have it. Order. Order. The proceeding has ended. 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 The proceeding has ended.
The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended.